So let me share a scenario with you. We have a patient who wants cataract surgery, but she has a movement disorder called tardive dyskinesia. It's a side effect of medication that she takes and it results in some involuntary movements of her body and her head. Now we did cataract surgery on her right eye in January, 2023, everything went well. I saw her in the office earlier in October, 2023, and she seemed to have some mild movement, but nothing that wasn't manageable. It's then late in October, 2023, and she is going to have cataract surgery. We bring her to the operating room and she is moving a lot. And I just wanna show you what we did and let you ponder how you might approach a similar situation. Keep in mind in our surgery center, we use oral Valium and lidocaine for topical anesthetic. We don't use an anesthesiologist. We don't use IV sedation. So most of our patients can manage and if they move a little bit, it's no factor. We're used to that. She moved a lot more than normal and I just wanna show you how we dealt with that. Thanks for watching. Hey, Kelly, I don't think we're going to do your surgery today. Okay, can I take the top table? Today? Yeah, I think you moved too much. Uh, yeah, I can't really help you. Yeah, I know. I don't think you moved the last time they Yeah, I don't know. Let me try it again. Okay, okay. Sorry. Can I take the top table? I mean, I know you're doing uh, your best, but uh, you don't want to do something where you can't control this. I can't control uh, it. Uh, 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 You can see one of our nurses is holding her to kind of make her feel more comfortable and to stabilize her. So as I bring the microscope light in front of her eye, I kind of get a feel for how in control of her movement she really is. Can you look at the light? You have to look at the light. You can't? Why can't you? She's moving quite a bit and again, I'm just kind of getting her acclimated to the environment and seeing if she can kind of collect herself. Are you okay right now? You like to feel okay? Pretty good? You think you can stay still like that? Okay, thank you. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to stay calm and to speak in a normal tone and to not raise your voice or get emotional with the patient. If you're calm, the patient calms down and the team stays calm. It's super important. So at this point, she seems like she's ready to go. It's not a perfect scenario, but this is where experience helps. You look toward the bottom of your leg. Oh, that's good, that's good. 
In the interest of time, this video has been edited. The total surgery time was about 14 minutes. We make our primary entry with our 2.8 millimeter diamond care tome. Now doing the capsular axis is kind of dicey. When she moves, I have my hands resting on her head. So my hand and my instrument in her eye will move in sync with her if she moves her head. So as you can see, she moves quite a bit. We place more viscoelastic in the eye to kind of stabilize the anterior chamber to make sure that the lens is displaced posteriorly. And then we just work expeditiously to finish her capsular axis. We perform hydro dissection and then we work to rotate the nucleus to facilitate removal of the lens. Okay, now you have to feel fluid and pressure. Now for phaco emulsification, we usually use a second instrument. The second instrument is introduced through the secondary incision. And I quickly realized that her head movement is too much to safely use a second instrument. And so I choose to use a one-handed phaco emulsification technique where I create a central crater. So we create a central crater or bowl on low vacuum, and then we increase the vacuum of the FACO handpiece and prolapse the cataract into the anterior chamber and then remove it using a one-handed technique. So I think it's important for surgeons to know how to use both a two-handed technique and a one-handed technique because there are scenarios such as this one where it's probably not safe for you to use two instruments in the eye if the patient is moving this much. Ah. Everything's looking good. So at this point, we've safely removed her nucleus. We're able to remove the cortical remnants using irrigation and aspiration. And really at this point the hard part is over and she's had her cataract safely removed we're just 
meticulously cleaning away any cortical remnants. We polish the posterior surface of the anterior capsule. And then we insert her new lens implant. So I thought this was an interesting scenario to share. And I thought there were some teachable points that we could all learn from. And just know that in our surgery center, we're always going to err on the side of safety. If we feel like we're in over our heads, we're going to cancel the case and not proceed. But just like everything, as time goes by, we build our skill sets and we get a little better and we're able to handle the difficult cases such as this one. And fortunately, this patient ended up seeing great. Looking at her chart, the day after surgery, she was able to see 2025 without glasses and her eye looked great. So all's well that ends well. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you sharing your time with me. Have a wonderful day. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.